Welcome to our Grace Life YouTube channel. We would love for you to like or subscribe to this channel and really be a part of our online family and community. We hope that you enjoy today's message. Hey Grace Life, we just wanted to say thank you to you for everything that you have done to support us and our church here at Generations House of Worship. Yeah, man, we love you guys. Listen, all the fruit that's hanging off this tree is your fruit too. We're multiplying. It's such a great thing to be able to, to be a church that's investing in other churches and you guys have done that. We would not be where we are today if you guys were not who you were in our yesterday and continue to be in our life. We're grateful for you, Pastor Buck and Amy. We love you guys. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for pouring into us. And thank you for taking us along in this crazy ride called Kingdom Ministry in the name of Jesus. Thanks, guys. We love y'all. Peace out. Come on, somebody give a shout. Are you wide awake? Hey, that was one of our church plants. And it's cool to help plant a church, but it's really cool to buy a church for somebody and finance it for them. And they send the money here and we pay the mortgage. But uh, I just wanted to say something really cool about that. Nick and Nikki are like our kids. They're wonderful people. They're an extension of Grace Life Church. And uh, what's neat about that, when something's God, as they walked alongside us for, I think, a year and something here, we kicked them out. We said, if you're going to plant a church, go do it, right? Year or two into it, we walked around this church. The mail was coming out. It, it, I, said, I said, Nick, I need another place. I said, this is yours, dude. Let's pray. So we grabbed hands. We agreed. Then we walked around it, you know, not seven times because things fall when you do that. We, we wanted to... But, but we walked around it, we claimed it, and then I, he said, what do we do now? I said, we'll put in an offer. And he said, he said, I don't have any credit, I can't afford it, I can't. I said, I know that, I got that told hundreds of times, I got denied. But I said, let's go do this. So they said, we'll take, it was, it was, uh, not, it was assessed at six ninety five. dollars We bought it for $150,000, amen? They did $200,000, two hundred dollars two fifty dollars worth of renovations. Now that appraises for a million dollars, amen? Isn't God good? In a couple years, I think three years, they just sell a three-year anniversary, and there are two services, and they're blowing it up. Amen? Come on. We're for the local church. Part of our vision. And don't forget, Seth, stand up if you're here. Seth, you here? See this guy, Seth? He's cool. Seth's taking a team to India, Jared's homes that we support, that beautiful missionary homes for kids. And he's going to take a team. So if you want to see that, go to Connections or go see Seth. He would be sometimes in children's teaching, I think, today, later. But see him if you're interested in going. We're going to probably take a team of 6 to 10. So it's not huge. And it is a third world country. So you really got to gotta have shots. And you got to be careful because there's a lot of things. It's, it's not like the glamorous missions trip. It's kind of. So if you're hardcore, see Seth. Amen. Hey, 21 days of prayer has been awesome. And fasting has been awesome. Why? Because we got to have Mike Finch's barbecue yesterday. It's the second piece of meat that touched my mouth, that smoked meat. And it was like Jesus gave me a whole new revelation of meat. Where he told Peter, arise, kill, and eat. Amen? <laughs> well, that's what we did. But anyway, don't let that flesh dominate you. And, and, and you know what? Live this fasted life where we can little by little say, Lord, I don't want to come out of 21 days of fasting and prayer and and." It changed my life. I don't know about yours, but more revelation, more understanding, more breakthrough, all the way around. Tons of miracles, signs and wonders, things happening. The, the culture of our church stronger, new situations, new opportunities with our building. I can't wait to tell the, the information probably this week that, that God gave us a revelation of and we acted on it. And now some things are changing quickly. Amen. Amos 9, 13, things will happen quickly. So in order to have that happen, you've got to pray things out. Amen? So what it says in Ephesians 5, it says, Rip off the cover of those frauds and see how attractive they look in the light of Christ. Wake up from your sleep. Come on, some, someone say, wake up. wake up. Climb out of your coffins. Christ will show you the light. Come on, say, more light. More light, more, light, more revelation. In Isaiah 58, when we're fasting, your light will spring forth, it says, as the noonday. So watch your step. Use your head. Make the most of every chance you get. 
These are desperate times. Father, help us to see it. Help us to know it. And at Grace Life Church, I pray over the people the perfect will of God. I pray that we're in the right places at the right time with the right relationships, doing the right thing. As you come back, as you said you would, we will be a healthy church. Because whoever finds God finds I love this. You know, I, I, I told this last night. i got to tell it again because you got to understand where I'm coming from. You see, we don't, when we're not awake, hey, dude, I'm a, everyone say, I'm going to try to smile. They say, you need to smile more in your pictures. <laughs> we love the Lord. We just love y'all. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> love that guy, Harry. Yeah. So, so listen, so, so I woke up at my house and out of a deep sleep. I was in a deep sleep one time. My wife was preaching at the Oklahoma church. I was watching the kids. Not always a good thing when they were babies. Something went wrong when I watched the kids. I don't know what the deal was. But anyway, she, she, was, she was gone, and I was the only one home. And, and all of a sudden, 1.30 in the morning, it was windy and rainy, and the alarm goes off. And I heard it, and I was like in this super deep sleep, and I came out little by little. Notice, like, when you have babies and they cry at night, I would never wake up for those. Yeah, that high pitch, ah, that was like just not good. I, babe, go get the child. <laughs> I want to go back to sleep. And if we're real, that's kind of the way it worked out. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I come out of this deep sleep, and then the first thing I hear, I jump out of bed, and I'm like, what is going on? And it's, we got this loud, ah, ah, and I hear the, the operator come over the, from ADT or something, over the loudspeaker system and saying, there's an intruder in your basement. The basement door has been compromised. And I went into Rambo mode. I strapped a knife down here. I grabbed a gun over here. I threw these boots on. I was in my boxer drawers. And then I, I, I just reached to the dirty clothes and I grabbed a shirt. And I pulled it on real quick and it felt super tight for some reason. And so I'm running through the house. I lock the kids' doors, run downstairs, and I'm looking in my office. Office door's compromised. I kick the door open. You ain't seen the movies. I cleared the room. I looked at the door. Door wasn't open. I went to the other room. I looked down. I went in the mechanical room because that's where I would hide if I were behind the heater, right? So I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm ready. Fingers on the trigger. I don't even know if I had bullets in there. But anyway, I was like, I was like, I ran upstairs, then all of a sudden I flipped every, you know how you do, you flip every light in the house on, because you want to expose that which is in the dark. I hit both garage door buttons, they go up. By the time I did that, the police are there, three cop cars in the front of my house with these Van Halen light show on. Lights are more bright than this. I'm standing there like this with a gun shaking. And the police are like, Mr. Schaefer, drop the gun, put it on the floor. And I'm like looking around. And they're just kind of staring at me. <laughs> Boxers with crazy looking boots. I had my wife's black Victoria's Secrets V-neck lace. <laughs> my muffin top was sticking out. And, and the guy, the cop came up. He looked me up and down. He said, are you sure someone broke in? You look like you're cross-dressing. <laughs> but but when, you're, when you're out of it, you don't really know what you're putting on. When you're a little groggy and your, your adrenaline kicks in, you're not as woke as you should be. This, this word woke is, is, is to be awakened, but it's, it's more than that. It's, they're telling us to be woke to these social injustices. Are you woke? What's that mean? God said, Pastor, are you woke? He said, there's a social injustice that you have to be alert, aware of, that you have to be sober and vigilant. And I believe it's more of a spiritual term here at Grace Life Church. Are you woke? Are you woke? Are you wide awake? Are you woke to what's going on in the spirit? Because there's a spiritual battle going on. And there's no way we can win the spiritual battle if we're not woke spiritually. And if you're asleep spiritually is what these scriptures are talking about. Listen to what he says in Romans 13, 11, But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of time and you doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. The dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. 
Come on, say, be awake. Be awake. Look at your neighbor, say, you're woke. you're woke. So as we prayed out the will of God, here's what I got out of it. Ready? He said, you as a pastor and a leader, you're not just called to be a pastor. I called you to create and change culture. Culture. Change. How do you start changing culture? Well, you change it in your home first. Come on, say amen to that. Men start leading, amen? Wives start following, amen? And start leading together and make that husband be the head of the house. I'm praying for you, honey. You lead, right? And come on, right? Well, 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 well pastor, you know, no, no, no. We got to believe the biblical stance that God gives us. He called you to be a helpmate. He called you to be a leader. That doesn't make you any less anymore. We're co-heirs together of the grace of life. Matt and Larissa do this together. Brady and Rachel do it together. Me and Amy do it together. Joe and Sabrina were trying to do No, I'm just kidding. Shh. I'm sorry. Her dad's sitting here. I'm, I'm, that, that. that was wrong, man. I repent. If it's the will of God, if it be thy will, O Lord. Joe's saying, I'm praying for that. Anyway. But, but one thing we got to do is create the culture. How come you're so red? We got to create the culture. He's so happy she's working here. He said it's an answer to prayer. Anyway. Uh, check it out. If we're going to create that culture, when I came on this, the Lord said, you had a great time, didn't you? Yeah. You got revelation, didn't you? Great power. Yeah, didn't you? He said, how about we continue this into the rest of our lives? How about we rejoice all the time? First Thessalonians 5, we rejoice evermore all the time. We pray without ceasing. For in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. How many want to do the will of God? Yes. Get your hand up. How many want to do the will of God? Yes. At Grace Life Church, we all want to do the will of God. Right? Pray without what? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So Jesus makes a statement when they're selling stuff and they're, they're doing, you know, pigeons and doves and animals in the, in, the, in, the, in the temple. And he turns over the tables and he's upset. He says, my house will call, be, is called to be a house of? My house is called to be a house of? How about we just do the word, amen? So this new season on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll pray again at 6.30 in the morning every Tuesday and Thursday. 1 o'clock in the afternoon. If you're off in the afternoon and you're a late sleeper, you can come at 1 and be taught prayer school and then pray. If you work all day and you say, well, I have an excuse, I work all day, okay. At 6 o'clock, you can come and pray for one hour before your life group or 30 minutes. But, but the Lord said, if there's 2,500 people on our roster in this church, he said, can you get the tithe to pray? 10%, 250 people pray every week. How many will be one of those prayers? Okay, we got it. Let's try it again. How many will be one of those prayers? Okay, because where there's prayer, great things happen. So the Lord said this to me, if you're going to stay woke, he said, and you're going to have to learn to be an effective prayer because an effective prayer is awakened and stays woke. You see, I prayed when we were sitting at our table and we were getting in this high tops bar and grill where we started our first building we moved into. It's now the Hyundai dealer for Cochrane. I, I ate a sandwich with Jay. We brought him to be a youth pastor, my wife on the right, and we were getting rid of the plant to church. And we moved into that building, and it was Thursday, and I thought, we got everything ready. We forgot about chairs. So I just kind of believe that God should answer our prayer because that's what he said he would do. Amen? So I said, thank you, Lord, for the tuna fish sandwich with pickles and carrots and Cheetos and iced tea. Because you say, how come you remember that? When God does something in your life, you remember the setting. I had this big AT&T phone that was about that big, and it was thick back then. And that phone rang, and I said, I thank you for that food, and I thank you. And I told my wife, I just forgot, but I thank you for chairs. I just, the word came out of my mouth, say, say chairs. chairs. I said chairs, and I didn't get the word out of my mouth. I didn't say in Jesus' name yet. I was getting ready to say amen, and the phone rang. I grabbed the phone off the site. Remember, you had it on your hip. It had a little clip. Anyway, and I had hair then. So... I pull the phone off, and it's Pastor John Nuzo who's on our board now. He says, hey, I, I heard you were planting a church. He said, and Mike Caminetta called me from uh, Ohio where the Football Hall of Fame is. 
What's that, Akron? Ak Canton. And so he says, hey, he has 280 chairs he needs to get rid of this weekend. Do you need them? I said, yes, sir. Thank you. Bye. Shh. Started having rejoicing and celebrating. Amen. Why? Because no one else heard my prayer but God. And he answered it. Listen, he answered it before, barely before I asked. He already had a provision. We went and got chairs right away. And you know what? Today I have that same faith to believe our building's here today. The right parking spaces we need, we have today. So, so as God tells us this, he tells us, listen, James says, if you, ask, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. Say, ask of God. He says in John 5, 14, this is the confidence. See, if you don't have confidence, you're not woke. This is the confidence. You see what I'm talking about? I believe the same chairs and the five million things I believe God for in between then and now, and I'm still believing God for this next level. In fact, my faith hasn't changed. I trust Him. I'm not, I'm not putting pressure on you. How many people would have 16 building campaigns and milk you and tell you, we need money. We, if we don't get money, we're here, get some cotton from Israel. Take some sand, and if you give, God will bless you. And Well, He will, but do I need to manipulate you? I'm more interested in you hearing from God for yourself. Because he said, you give not of necessity or under compulsion. The Lord loves a cheerful giver who delights in giving. If you're saved and if you're woke, you're a giver. I can't convince you because I'm going to get you to give, give you a gold brick in the new church with your name on it, Joey Touchstone. You give 5000 I'll put a picture of your wife. Give 10 and we'll put your baby in there. <laughs> Think about it, the Touchstone family forever when you walk through the wall. I want my reward not here. I want it up there. Right? So if you're woke unto what God tells you to do and you're obedient to that, you're praying the effect of prayer of faith because the confidence you have in him, if you ask anything according to his will, is it his will we grow his church? Is it his will we get more people saved? Is it his will we have more parking spaces? Is it his will we have 1,500 chairs? Is it his will we have a great staff that's not in poverty, that makes good money, that lays down their life for the kingdom and should be blessed? When I came here, they said, hey, the Lord keep you humble and will keep you broke. That's not the will of God, is it? God wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, right? It's the will of God. Say, say it with me. We want the will of God. Amen? So the confidence we have in him, if we ask anything according to his word or his will, we know, we don't hope so, we know we have the petitions desired of him. So let's say it's ours. See, you're woke when you really pray the prayer of faith. He said, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. He that wavers like a driven with the wind of the sea, a wave that's driven and tossed. Let him not think he'll receive anything of the Lord. So God says in your faith, you got to be so focused and so an effective prayer. So this is called to be a house of? So if we're going to be woke, we have to be awake spiritually and not just driven by food and lust of the flesh and entertainment. Right? Say, awaken. Say woke. woke. So then he goes on to tell us in James 5, listen, is any one of you sick? Verse 14, call on the elders of the church, spiritual guides. Pray over him, anoint him with oil in the Lord's name. And the prayer that is of? And the prayer that is of? So if there's prayers of faith, there can be prayers of doubt, can't there? How do you know that? Because he said, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, those things that you prayed for. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have. Say have. What are we asking for according to his will? He wants us to prosper. He wants us to be in health. He wants us to prioritize the kingdom. He wants us to prioritize prayer so we're praying in line with the will of God. Now, you know what the world wants you to think, and you know why there's a spirit of doubt and unbelief through this city over the years? Because people have been, instead of New Testament taught, they've been lied to. Well, if it be the will of God, if it be thy will, oh God. So, and it sounds spiritual, but it's stupid. 
If it be thy will, O oh God, to heal Aunt Susie. No, he died so Susie could be healed. If it be thy will that we have some money for the new building, he died so we could have more than enough to do his will. Do you believe that? See, the church has been so full of unbelief. I love what John Wesley said. Ready? He said, it seems like God is limited by our prayer life. He can do nothing for humanity lest somebody ask him. Isn't that the truth? Now, the old Baptist mentality that I grew up in when I was a little kid was God is sovereign. Well, he is sovereign. But what they were trying to say through that is God will do whatever he wants, which is a cop-out. That means I don't have to do nothing. Sirrah, sirrah, whatever shall be, shall be wrong. Come on, say get woke. When you wake up to the will of God and you wake up to the word of God, you begin to pray in the light. You begin to pray out his will. You get downloads from heaven and you pray in courting with his word. And it's like when we get 250, we create a culture that's playing tug of war. And it's like if you're losing the spiritual battle, you get another believer that learns how to pray. And they're like, come on, baby. And you get another guy like Joe. And he comes, come on. And then Joe. And then Herb. And then all of a sudden, Mike Finch is our anchor. Come on, baby. And we're like, we're, we're, we're like the devils looks like a bunch of demons trying to keep us from our destiny spiritually, and we're just dragging him all over the place. That's what happens in the spirit when we pray corporately. Come on, we win. Because we follow his will, because we follow his word. But he says, look at this important part, 16. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you might be healed. The earnest, heartfelt, continued, someone shout prayer, prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available and is dynamic in its working. I, I connected this in the spirit as I was praying this morning, and he said, people don't pray right because they don't know they're righteous. And if you don't know your identity and your position in Christ, that's why you're not praying very effectively. Come on, say, get woke. You can't get woke until you know you're righteous. The Bible says he became sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. If you don't pray, pray from a position of righteousness, you're not praying the prayer of faith. Righteousness means God made me righteous and he sees me just like Jesus. And when I ask, he gives. When I ask according to his will, he always does it. That brings confidence to keep me woke. So if you really get answered prayer, you want to pray more, not less. If you really know how to pray, it's, like it's better than crack. I've never had crack, but I get addicted to it. Okay, that was a bad illustration. Well, whatever, you get addicted. Okay, beef, whatever. When you got to have it. It's like, I got to I gotta have it. I'm a, I got this desire to wake up and pray because my prayers move mountains. How many believe your prayer can move mountains? But the lie is God is sovereign. He'll do whatever he wants to do. And God says, I'm waiting for you to say it. I'm waiting for you to believe it. I'm waiting for you to prophesy it. I'm waiting for you in Pittsburgh to take dominion. I'm waiting for you to say something that's according to my will so I can birth it into the earth. It's in the spirit, but God can do nothing less men pray and ask him for your children. They'll all be saved. That's what the word says. Great shall be their peace. What's the word say? Pray it. So if you don't know how to pray, you're in big trouble in this day. And if you don't listen to your pastor's words, you're probably rebellious. Say amen. amen. Because wait, 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 wait. I say, get in a life group. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do a life group. Oh, okay, why? Come out, devil. Don't be rebellious. When we do something all in, we are, we're all praying, right? We're all giving, right? We're all, we're all serving, right? We're all doing the will of God for our lives, right? We want all our children to be saved, right? We're all prospering, right? We're all having the right mindset, right? So, so we're all in. And so if we ask in faith because we're woke, the Bible says, Ephesians 3, 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could. If you could ask this, God will give you this. 
If you can ask this, God will give you this. But he asks you to ask. That's what faith is. He says, I love when you come to me boldly to my throne of grace. And particularly not when you ask for a bunch of junk in the temporal world. When you ask kingdom first prayer mindset, all these things will be added unto you. See, we got some Christians just think that's a way to get stuff. And God says, eh, that just lasts a time. And the devil will buy into that. He'll let you buy into that to keep you bound and asleep. Because it's not about this temporary world. If he gets you to buy into the eternal, then he gives you the rest of the stuff, and it's not even a desire. Come on, say, I'm woke. The prayer of faith will make you woke because it's effective. He says, Elijah was human, verse 17. And he prayed that it would not rain, and it did not rain. Then he prayed that it would rain, and it did rain. In verse 18, then he prayed again, the heavens supplied rain, and the land produced crops as usual. And he says, Elijah was a lot like us. He He had emotions. How many have some emotions? He had some feel. Come on, don't lie to me. Put your hand up. He said, I'm just like you guys, but I pray, and God changes. He holds the rain. Joshua prays and the sun stands still. God's telling him, I dare you to pray. I dare you to make a change. I dare you to be the one. So as we pray in the light, I love this. Zechariah, what do we ask for? What do we ask for? If we're going to stay woke, we live in answered prayer. We ask God to pour out his spirit on all flesh here in Pittsburgh. How many know it's happening now? Come on, how many know it's happening? See, if you know it's happening, we're seeing more people saved, more marriages healed, more people set free, more people coming to church, more word going forth, more downloads in our live stream, more, more, say more. More More money going to missions, more missionaries, more church plants. Someone say more. More. Because it's God's will that we increase. So what's he tell us to ask? Zechariah 10.1. How we pray according to the will of God. Ask of the Lord in the time of the latter rain. Come on, say latter rain. So the Lord will make bright clouds and give the showers of rain to every one grass in his field. You see, there's something about growing things by the spiritual rain that's happening. It's easier to grow when there's not a drought spiritually. Those who hunger and thirst shall be filled. How many realize it's monsoon season in the spirit? Wait, 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 stop. You didn't get that. How many realize it's pouring in the spirit? But if you're not engaged in the spiritual wokeness, you're just going, what's different? Doesn't seem much different. Even the unbeliever came in. What was it, a guy last week? He came in. He said, I saw you. I could get baptized online. I signed up at Grace Life Church. We never seen him in our lives. He walked in the front door. The guy, Frank, that connected with him online, met him as a greeter at the front door. He said, I'm so-and-so. He said, I recognize that name. You signed up to get baptized. He said, never been here before. Don't know what to expect. He grabbed his hand, said, come to the service. After he got baptized, he said, I want to be part of a life group. How many know things are speeding up? Well, did I do that? Did Brady do that? That's the Holy Ghost. When it rains like that, people just receive the Holy Ghost. People just get healed. People just get baptized. They hear a word. They respond to the word. And God makes the miracle take place. How many enjoy that? I love that season. So some of y'all living in a dry season. Things aren't seem to be happening. Once your life was full of darkness, Ephesians 5. But now you have the very light of our Lord shining through you because your union with him. Your mission is to live as children flooded with revelation light. And the supernatural fruits of his light will be seen in you. Goodness, righteousness, truth. Then you will learn to choose what is beautiful to our Lord. Verse 13, whatever, is, whatever the revelation light exposes, it will, I love this, it will also correct. Church, listen to me. Is God exposing anything? Well, pastor, you're just spiritual. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I have flesh too. And so God told me, he said, it's adamant if you're going to fulfill my plan and my purpose that you pray continually. And you te- I do, but that you teach your people to pray continually. If, if we're going to empty the counseling rooms and we're going to have ther- therapists get laid off, we got to pray. Because if you'll come to prayer, you might lose your therapist. If you come to prayer, you might get off the meds. If you come to prayer, you might move the mountain of addiction and break the chains and the curses. 
there might be an anointing to break you because you as a man or a woman learned how to pray. And when you're in the presence of God, he breaks chains off your life. I, I need to counsel. We need to talk. Maybe not. Watch Dr. Phil. How's that working for you? Listen, listen, listen. We got to wind this up. I'm getting ready to land. How's that? I'm getting ready to land. I'm circling the airport. What? How many want more revelation light? Come on, how many want more light? Well, I'm not changing. No, 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 that's rebellion. If you want more revelation light, you're asking God, and the Lord told me, teach my people to pray, to create the culture of a monsoon that's harvesting continually. Spirit of God's moving continually. And we have it big time here. I have people walk in our church and go, this isn't like my church. I said, is that bad or good? Oh, they said, it's like I feel something. I said, yes, we want more feelings. <laughs> yeah, we feel God is what you're saying. I, someone said, I feel love. Yeah, come on. I feel power. Yes, the earnest, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available and it's dynamic and it's working. Say, I feel something. Now, we're not led by that feeling, but I feel something. And so he says right here, he says, and everything that reveals truth is light to the soul. And that's why the scripture says, arise, you sleeper. Get woke. Rise from the dead. The anointed one will shine, will shine his light into you. You like that? Listen, arise, shine for thy light. How many people have been living in darkness as Christians for years? No revelation. It's a bad place. See, you can't be woke to the Spirit until you have revelation. You have a logos, a written word, that gives you revelation. But when you get a rhema of the word, when you get a d direct download and you go, I see it. How many people need to see that? How to love your wife. How to be the righteousness of God in Christ how to be generous, how to be holy and set apart. These are things the Holy Ghost can show you. You hear them, but you've got to let them download into your heart so you can get revelation, and you've got to meditate. Meditation brings revelation. Revelation brings transformation. We want that transformation. Meditate therein day and night. Isaiah 61, listen, arise, shine, for thy light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Behold, darkness is right now covering the earth. Gross darkness of the people. But the Lord will arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen? And Gentiles will come to that light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. That leaves me to finish up with this. So if praying in the light keeps you woke, if, if praying a prayer of faith, believing that we receive when we pray, Creates this great expectation that I want to pray more because my prayers get answered. Come on, say my prayers. My prayers. Come on, say my prayers. my prayers. Get answered. Do you start to, well, you know, you don't know me. I'm not perfect and I'm unworthy. Wait, don't buy that. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. You pray from a position of righteousness. Your prayer changes Monroeville. I want to say that again. Rewind. I'm kind of looking for an amen. So be it. Your prayer changes Monroeville. Come on, your prayer changes Pittsburgh. Amen. If you sit in the chair, this one lady comes to prayer. She has an oxygen tank. She gets down. I said, if you can pray, you can change the world. Maybe it's your call to pray, but it's all our call to pray. We threw a couple people in the room and said, those are the intercessors. You pray, we'll party. No, no, no. God says we're all called to be prayers. It's part of our lives if we're going to be woke. But I love this. So if we understand that prayer of faith that's powerful and effective if we understand that we can pray in the light and ask for the heathen and ask for the rain God's waiting on us isn't he how many think we're waiting on God anybody we're not God's waiting on his church God's waiting on his church God's sovereign pastor yeah he is but he can do nothing in the earth until you ask him make it personal say I have to ask and he'll do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that's working in a smoker's cloud on a tall building. No, to the power that is working in you. 
That's what he taps into. He filled you with his glory. He filled you with his power. He filled you with his anointing. And he's waiting on you to do something about it besides just believing God for your paycheck. Just waiting on the Social Security check to come. Just waiting on the food stamps to get there. Then I'll do something. Get out and make something happen, bless God. You're a, you're a creative person. Create something of value. Right? You're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Finally, if you have those direct downloads to be woke, and, and I'll say this from my heart because we got to, we got to land this. I was here yesterday, 300 and some people at Pastor Ray's burial. And what? thank you guys for helping with that. Amen. Come on, that was honor. You guys honored. But I said, Lord, I met people I haven't seen for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years. And I'm looking and they're still stuck. Same place. We left in 1977, and these people I met are still stuck in the same place. And I, I went home and sought the Lord. How come so much depression? How come, how, isn't it bad to see someone in poverty, but you see them 10 years later, they're still stuck in that mindset? You see someone in doubt and unbelief, and now they have a sickness and disease. And I said, Lord, what? I'm not that great, and I'm not someone that's better than anyone else. I'm just a man of God, just trying to be a believer I said, what's the difference, Lord? He said, it's all about light and darkness. It's all about faith and unbelief. It's all about the prayer of faith. It's all about being woke and living woke and choosing not to be stuck in 73. What the Lord did, brother. No, God's doing something today. Are you woke today? Are you still hurt and a victim over what happened yesterday and last year and three years ago? And people pile this baggage up and they're stuck. And I said, Lord, what, what's the difference? And he said, You've had men of God in your life. I took you on the backside of the wilderness in Oklahoma for 20 years. And as a little boy, he said, I downloaded into you a spirit of faith. I said, what? He said, I put a spirit of faith that you believe that your God, anything is possible. That God will direct you. God will guide you. God will be there for you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You believe that I'm big. You read my word as if it's written to you. Come on, say a spirit of faith. So I said, Lord, how do I download a spirit of faith? See, Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. God said, go possess the land. And like we're reading in the honor book about the Roman centurion in Matthew 8, this is, this is the north pole of the kingdom, faith. He didn't have Bible school. But he said he must have heard about what Jesus was doing. Everywhere he goes, he heals the blind, the lame, the sick. So he heard something like, this guy's doing stuff. He showed up as a man that's over 100 soldiers, and he said, hey, my servant lies at home sick, paralyzed. And he said, Jesus looks over, he said, I'll come and heal him. He says, whoa, 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 stop. I know you're a healer. I heard about it, and I believe it. Look, look at this real quick. Dissect this. He heard it and believed it. What we talk about at communion? Slow of heart. Well, I don't know, Pastor. How's the devil get people? Not his will to prosper. If, if, if it was his will for the prosper you, you wouldn't be broke. If it was his will to heal you, you wouldn't be sick. So that doesn't work. That, that's what Christians do. I've preached all over the world. That's what they say. And I say, when, when, when I hold on to the word and I say, this is what the word says. I will have it. I don't care what anyone else says. This is what my God told me. And you hold on to that like a bulldog grip, and it always works. So he says, cleaning lady didn't come today. The house is messy. I don't even need you to come to my house. Look at this. Look at this. Great faith. How many want great faith? Stop analyzing stuff. Stop living by your emotions. Stop living by your feelings. Stop saying out of your mouth negative stuff that curses the plan of God for your life. Never works out for me. We never have enough. And the devil takes that and says, I got you. He says, I'm a man. Look, look at this. How many people aren't walking in God's blessing because they got their own rebellious opinion? Now that's good preaching. That's true. You know that? You know why? Here's what he says. I'm a man submitted to someone that's over me. And when I hear his word flank to the left, 
I don't go, let me think about it. Let me pray about it. I don't feel led. We're tired. I go, left, we're on it. See ya. I heard a word and I go. You see where the devil's getting Christians? I don't know if I'm in agreement with that new building. Guy stood downstairs said, I don't, I don't think I want to move forward in a new building. I like this building. I'm, what? Rebellion? Satan? Hmm? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you don't want to move forward with the will of God? What do you mean you can't lift your hands and worship? What do you mean you can't be a part that's a generous person? What do you mean you don't want to be part of a life group because you're isolated? That's rebellion. Guess, listen to what he says. I'm a man that put myself under these people's word. I'm submitted to his will. And if his will, like a Spartan, says give your life, I march into terror and give my life. That's what I do. You go, huh? I'm a man under authority. And Jesus looks back and goes, just speak the word. Notice everything goes back to words. Just speak a word and my servant will be healed. In other words, he's saying, I command the word to go and touch his body. And the centurion looked and smiled and said, I got it. See ya. What's the Bible saying? The self-same hour he was healed. And Jesus looks over and marveled at his faith. I haven't found faith like this in my Bible school. I've been with guys three some years. I haven't found that kind of faith that just trusts the word. Come on, say that's good. Now listen, the spirit of faith will keep you woke. And I love this. Because this is the whole essence of the prayer of faith. What's he tell us? He says, Mark 11, 22, the fig tree was cursed. And he said, this is how the kingdom works. I can't believe the fig tree died that you cursed. He said, have the God kind of faith. This is, this is what you need to learn. Listen, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. Come on, say, have the God kind of faith. What kind of faith does God have? God has the kind of faith that in Genesis when he said, let there be light, and said, let's make an earth, let's said, let's make animals, said, let's make man in our image, said, he said some stuff, and he saw what he said. So these people had a different spirit, and he says in, in verse 23, for verily I say unto you, whosoever, did he say pastors, preachers, fivefold ministries, whosoever, come on, say whosoever, Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, uh, unto the big thing, unto that spirit of depression, unto that spirit of poverty, unto that spirit of schizophrenia, unto that spirit of addiction, big stuff, right? Whosoever, whoever, Jesus says, whoever says, whether it's a fig tree, no matter what it is, if you got to talk to that thing, you have to get vocal because you're a speaking spirit. You want to change your world? James 3 says the tongue on a horse, you can put pressure on it. It'll turn big things around. He says you want that mountain to move? You put pressure on your tongue and say unto the mountain, move. Cast yourself into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe whatever he, believe whatever. Do you believe what you say? Doctor said, hey, pastor, you're sick. You know what I said back to him? I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. How many believe that? Now, he didn't say that, but if he does, that's what he gets. Amen? Because with long life, I'll be satisfied and him show me his salvation. It's just what the Word says. Sorry. It's what the Word says. So we look at this and we go, he'll have whatsoever he saith. It shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he, what? So look at this. I'll close right here. 2 Corinthians 4.13. We having... I said, Lord, what's the difference? What's the difference? How come? How come I seem to be like pastor? You really, you're a man. If it were that, I feel like I'm a normal Christian. I feel like everyone should be talking, right? I feel like everyone should walk in joy. Everyone should walk in breakthrough. Everyone should live by faith. Everyone should be healthy. Everyone should have joy. Is that right? Is this something I made up or is this what the Word says? We, I love this. Look, look. I'll preach this next week, man. We got to stop. Listen, we having the same. I love that laugh. Do it again. We having the same spirit 
Pastor Ray was a father in the faith that a percentage of a pastor dropped in some stuff in me. But I spent 20 years being schooled in faith. We having the same spirit of faith. What's the spirit of faith? Joshua and Caleb, different spirit. God said we go possess the land. Let's go do it. The ten other spies complained and moaned and griped. It doesn't look, the giants are big. The walls are fortified. We can't do it. There's no way. So they waited 40 years. They were stuck going around the same mountain 40 years. Wouldn't that be crazy? Stuck in the wilderness 40 years. And they said, we've walked around this mountain long enough. Turn northward. How many walked around your mountain long enough? Come on, I'm done walking around the mountain. It's time to possess the land. Amen? We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore I have. Come on, say it. Let's read this last. I'll let y'all go, man. You can go play in the snow. Let's read it together. As it is written, I and therefore I have. And we also. And therefore. Do you believe that today? We're waiting on God, Pastor. I get so sick of hearing that, I want to throw up on the floor. <laughs> We're just waiting on the Lord. Job 22, 28, you shall, you shall decide and decree a thing. You shall decide and decree a thing, and it will be established for you, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. How many believe that? You know what you got to do? You got to go home today and you got to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Jesus said, If you say unto that sick of mine tree, well, if you're sick of yours, I'm sick of mine. Amen? If you say unto that sick of mine tree, be plucked up from hither and go plant yourself in the sea, it, it will obey God, Pastor. It will just obey God. It won't obey God. I'm tired of hearing stuff. The, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord doesn't rebuke anyone. He uses you to rebuke things. He uses you to break curses. He uses your mouth to bring his will into this planet. Give the Lord a shout if you believe it. We believe, therefore we speak. Father, we thank you for your word today. We believe it will bring much fruit in our lives. Help us to rise up and become a speaking spirit that you called us to be. Let us be woke with the spirit of faith. Say, I got, I got it. Come on, just catch that spirit. The Lord told me this morning, you're going to download a spirit of faith in people that think they have faith, but they don't have it yet. Father, I download a spirit of quick to believe, quick to speak when it comes to your word. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that we know how the kingdom works. I thank you for downloads, Father, of revelation. Downloads of asking you bigger and believing you're the good God that sent Jesus. That gives us access in the name of Jesus. You can ask anything according to my will. In fact, today you might want to ask God that you can become a child of God. And he says all you do is call upon the name. It's also voice activated. You say, Jesus, I want you in my life. And all of a sudden, he responds to that, yes, I need God in my life. And just by your obedience of your mouth saying, yes, I want God. I want to believe in Jesus Christ. I want to believe that my sins are forgiven. I want to believe that he died on the cross and it was personal because he loved me. He gave his son because he loved me. And I'm going to be bold enough today as I bow my head and close my eyes to raise my hand and say something with my mouth that God said that I'm going to believe. If you're here today and you say, I'm ready to make peace with God. I'm ready to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. I'm ready to transform my life, and I'm going to live a life that's woke. Pray for me, Pastor. Just pop your hand up right now. Say, that's me. That's me, Pastor. Thank you, ma'am, right there. Thank you over there. Thank you. Anybody else, just pop your hand up. Just pop your hand up. Say, that's me. That's me. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Holy Spirit's moving right now. No pressure, but man, God loves you. He died for you. And he said, whoever calls on that name, are you here? Just put your hand up. Show God. Show God. I'm ready. I'm ready. Anybody else? We want to make sure. To die without knowing Jesus or to die that you think you're saved and you're playing a religious game is to be separated from him 
for eternity. It's, a, it's an important deal. He said, many will come in that day and I'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Last time, you want to make peace with God today. Just slip your hand up real quick. Say, that's me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's all pray together out loud. And let's make this prayer our cry. Say, Father, I believe that you died for my sin. And today, I repent of doing it my way. I give you my life. I receive your forgiveness. I want to do it your way. Awaken me spiritually. Today, let me be born again. Give me a brand new life. Thank you, my spirit is recreated. And I'm woke. It's no joke. I'm woke because of Jesus. I am a child of God. Come on, give a shout if you believe it. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. And remember to like or subscribe to our channels. And we will see you next week. Whoever finds God finds life.